Warmer weather means more garden pests. And this year we are making some changes in our garden so that we can be less reactive and more proactive when it comes to pest management. Today we're installing some insect netting over several of our beds so that we can keep some of the pests away from the start. Insect netting is a great non-invasive organic way to keep away garden pests. And typically we are battling those pests after the fact, but if you're dealing with any pests that flies around and lays eggs on your plants, you can actually prevent them from laying those eggs from the start. We are primarily using the insect netting on our brassica plants, such as cabbage, kale, and broccoli. The two largest threats to these plants are cabbage loopers and cabbage worms. There are moths that come around right when it starts getting warm out and they lay eggs on the leaves of the plants and eventually you'll find those worms on your plants. In the past, we've tried many different methods for getting rid of cabbage worms once they're there, and none of them are very effective. So this year, we're gonna be proactive. This method doesn't work for every plant because some of them require pollination, such as peppers, tomatoes, and cucumbers. You can put netting over those plants before they flower, but as soon as you see any flowers, you need to remove the netting. This isn't an issue for brassicas because they don't require pollination to fruit. Our insect netting came from Bootstrap Farmer. Special thanks to them for sponsoring this video. We'll also be using Bootstrap Farmer's tool to bend our rigid metal conduit into hoops. This is three quarter inch EMT. It's a galvanized metal tube that's typically used in electrical situations. You can find it in any big box store. It's pretty cheap, about 10 bucks a stick. And we will be bending this into hoops that cover each garden bed. So here's the hoop bender, and the game plan is to take our scrap piece of two by 10, we'll drill holes through where these two bolt holes are, bolt this to the, to the wood, and then we can screw the wood to something sturdy like our barn beam, or you know if you have a fence or anything like that, that would work. And that way, we have a good solid point to be bending our tube off of. They gave you this little extension here, so when you get to the end of the conduit, you don't have much leverage, you can use this as a lever arm. Just gonna do a little mark. This is definitely a nice high quality tool. The steel is really thick and the welds look very nice. I'm impressed. I think we'll put it somewhere like here, do like three screws into our big 10 by 10 oak beam. I don't think that's going anywhere. And then we can get off to the races with bending. Yep. We're mounted up. This thing is rock solid. Let's bend some tubing. Here comes our little construction worker. Today's workout is cleaning. A whopping 15 pounds. <laughs> no, it's simply more than 15. Uh, maybe it's 15. Congratulations. We have different bed widths within our garden. And when we initially built our beds, we did not have anything in mind for putting arches or hoops anywhere over the beds. So the one to my right is a lot larger. It's bigger than four feet in diameter. So our tubes are gonna fall within the bed on this one. The one over here to my left is about three foot in width. So our tubes are gonna fall outside of the bed, theoretically. So we've done one trial and error off camera to sort of figure out our process. If you want anything other than the standard four foot half circle that's four feet tall as well, then you'll have to buy a couple extra pieces and play around like we did. Our beds are like 52 inches wide roughly, but we only wanted the hoop to be about two foot tall just to save on netting material and whatnot. So we found that our optimal length of pipe needs to be about six foot, six inches. And then we leave a three inch straight section on either end. And then the bend lines are two foot. They basically leave six foot in the middle for two bend lines. I'll start marking my total length at six foot six, and then I'm gonna mark three inches back from either end. So at six foot three, and three inches. So between these inner three inch marks, that means there's gonna be six foot exactly. This is a two foot bend radius tool to make a four foot diameter circle. So every two foot, you gotta slide it and restart your bend. Otherwise you'll have a flat spot in your radius. So this gives you one nice smooth arc. So we're gonna mark at two foot and four foot. And then of course we already have our six foot mark. We're gonna line each of our bend marks up with this top edge of the tool and give her a yank down. With your full body weight. Yep. And just slide it through. And to the next one. There's your next one. <laughs> okay. Let me try one. And Elena is gonna demonstrate the leverage bar now, which comes with the tool, slides in, 
make sure we're lined up here. Perfect. Yeah. Let it rip. Just be careful. Look at that. Easy. Leverage makes everything easy. Now remember, don't bend that last three inch or three inch or so. Yeah. Keep that straight. So you want to keep going a little bit? So now we're ready to stake these bad boys in and you can use half inch rebar, but we have these concrete nail stakes. These are 18 inches long. We use them for the foundation on our house and don't have a use for them now uh, until we do another house. So we're going to use those instead. They already have a pointed end on them. You have to really hammer it. All right, let me do the other one. I'm a girl. I don't have forearm strength. No, I want to do it. You don't need it. It's all about technique. So you see how the see how I flicked the wrist? I know my all, forearm strength is just not there. All the power comes from the end of it, end of the swing. All right. <sighs> okay. What's wrong with the that? half inch rebar would definitely be looser on this. Yeah, but it works. That works. Give it a little kick. Set it down there. I think it's sturdy enough to hold fabric. Woo. Cool. It looks good too. Yeah, this looks really good. Nice. Now let's try the fabric. I'm going to put some clips on this real quick. I just want to get this on here so that I can go across this way. Yeah, this is going to work nice. Look at how pretty. And then we can just kind of tuck it in with a rock or something on the sides. I think I like the idea of leaving a little bit of excess and then I can kind of tie this. Take that, cabbage loopers. These clips are really nice. I can just unclip one side and I can check on my plants and harvest. So these clips are made specifically for the three quarter inch EMT. They work really nicely because you kind of just set your fabric wherever you want it and then they easily press on. What's, the, what's it made out of, metal or plastic? It's made out of plastic, and you gotcha. can see cool. how it's molded, and then it's just really super easy to clip on. I like this fabric. It doesn't seem like it will rip super easy. Right. All right, tying it up isn't anything special, so I just have my like two little piggy tails here. Make sure all my plants are in there. Then I have this middle part, and I kind of pull that here underneath and then just make some random knots and it seems to work good. Take this extra little bunch here and put a rock on it. Beautiful. Beautiful, it's so pretty. Looks like it was made to be there. Yep, it looks like it was made for this bed. We repeated the same process for the smaller beds, except we shortened the hoop length a little bit. This meant the ends of the hoops weren't quite as vertical, so we had to pound the stakes in at kind of an angle for them to fit right. Yeehaw! This is the hard part because you kind of have to bend it up and then this angled stake, if you bent these vertical, you wouldn't have that issue, but it seems to work out all right. It's not too bad. Yeah. Yeah, this it's really sturdy. really sturdy. Oh, it's going to be so nice. We ended up putting an additional clip on the top of the two ends. So if you're planning on using this method in your garden, I'd recommend allotting three clips for the end two hoops and then probably two for any hoops you need in the middle. We have about a five foot span here between these two hoops. I would gauge that you probably can have a five to six foot span between hoops depending on what fabric you're putting on it, but this seems to work for us. We're gonna be using hoops on this bed as well, but rather than putting insect netting on this one, we are going to use this aluminum shade cloth. So this reflects light and keeps the beds cooler. I have a lot of lettuce plants in here. I have onions and broccoli, arugula. All of these plants prefer cooler weather. So by making this area shaded, I hopefully can extend our growing season and also just help the plants grow more vigorous and healthier. The reason why we're not setting this all up today is because we have this beautiful catmint plant blooming and the bees absolutely love it. And I really don't wanna cover it until they are done using it. And so we're gonna wait a little bit. It's still pretty cool in our area. So until it gets extremely hot, maybe in two to three weeks, then that's when I'll put that covering on. The benefit of this aluminum shade cloth is that it can be used in many different ways. So not only can you use it in your garden, but another place that we plan to use it is on our chicken run. So right now we only have one little tiny shaded area for them within their run itself. And this will allow us to create a larger shaded area for them. Another way I've seen this used is people putting it on top of their greenhouses. We don't have a greenhouse today, but we plan to in the future. And anyone with a greenhouse knows that it can get pretty hot in there 
there, especially as you're brinking on those summer temperatures. So you can use something like this to throw over top of your greenhouse and it will cool it down. So we're really excited to try this in our garden this year, hoping to try it on our chicken run and we'll keep you posted on how it goes. Another neat thing about these hoop benders is you can use them for basically any application you want, including making full-scale greenhouses with them. They have 6, 10, 12, and 20-foot versions, I believe, so you can make huge hoop bends. Obviously, you'd be using larger diameter pipe for the larger hoops, but you can make greenhouses out of it or chicken runs or chicken tractors or a whole host of things that could use a hoop structure and fairly inexpensive EMT to be constructed. That's a wrap on this video. If you're interested in anything that we mentioned in the video, check out the description below. We have links to everything and happy gardening.